So if if uh, if you're just catching up with this on the uh, on the YouTube, um, we've had fun here at my place. Um, since about the start of the month, we've been having some random electricity, like feels like brownouts in certain rooms in our house, and it was weird, and it got progressively worse to the point. Where last night, just before we could do do the show, um, electricity in our house got noisy, which I've come to understand. When you can hear electricity, that's when there's a problem. Yes. Or, according to David Lynch, hmm. that's when evil is afoot. Because one of the underlying themes of Twin Peaks was that electricity is a marker for evil. No, uh, electricity is a marker for capitalism because um, this night cost us three hundred dollars in the electricity. And didn't, didn't I mean, have to do anything. tomato, tomato, potato, potato. It caught. Yeah, we had to have an electrician come out yesterday morning. Um. So this morning, oh, it was the, yeah, it was this morning, two hundred and twenty-five dollars just to have him here for an hour. Check the breaker boxes just to be like, no. Yeah, check the breaker boxes, outlets, switches, the switch outside, all of the stuff that was technically ours, and all of it was fine. All of it tested out just fine. So we called the power company. Now the reason why this got accelerated was last night. Electricity got very loud in here, and we lost, in about a second, we lost six surge protectors. That was it's a noise great. going around. And if you want to see what it looks like when a surge protector says, I'm done, um, well, here's, here's a look. That's the inside of a surge protector. Um, when, uh, when they go bad. Um, Fun fact, if the light on your surge protector goes out, it is no longer a surge protector. Now it's just uh, an outlet strip that smells funny. And while I, I see a lot of you saying your power company should reimburse you for it, I appreciate the sentiment, but this is America. So Yeah, they're not gonna do that. They're not gonna do that. They're they're not they're they're not. They're they're not gonna do that. All right, let's get the intro rolling. Because we do have incredibly stupid things, as always. Let's get this going. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment. We like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this week, crazy. we have seen people crazy many times feeling. impersonate so law enforcement. Lonely. For some reason or another. Usually those reasons have some level of stakes to them. I think this is the highest level of impersonation I have ever seen. With the, the rock bottom level of stakes involved. I mean, we did have a guy who did it just like to impress a girl. This is stupider. This is actually dumber. Really? Because he pretended to be like CIA or something. Woman accused of impersonating FBI agent attempting to close down Waffle House. Oh, baby, nothing closes the Waffle House. <laughs> I'm from New York, and even I know that. Well, you know, some things do, but, you know, it's like the apocalypse at that point. Um... Madisonville, Tennessee, an East Tennessee woman claimed to be an FBI agent and attempted to close down a Waffle House because its workers allegedly sold drugs from the back door of the restaurant. Kimberly Michelle Gonzalez. Okay, so what was weird? <laughs> We're gonna get letters. Isn't that that's just that's just the business model, right? <laughs> Kimberly Michelle Gonzalez, 60, of Madisonville, was charged with criminal impersonation. Madisonville police officer Andy Klein said he went to the restaurant um, 
at, shortly after 8 a.m., the officer said he was told by an employee of the restaurant that a woman was inside claiming to be an FBI agent. The woman allegedly said she had come to the Waffle House to shut down the restaurant because drugs were being sold out of the rear of the business. The employee allegedly asked, said she asked Gonzalez to pursue... Ah, there. The employee allegedly said she asked Gonzalez to produce some identification, and the woman showed her a brown notebook with a Tennessee badge on it. First of all, sweetheart, we call it the Federal Bureau of Investigation for yeah. a reason. Not the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, the Federal just because it looks like an important badge does not mean it's the right badge. But it wasn't even a badge. It was a notebook. With the badge with on the it. the state seal right. on it. Yeah, yeah. You could, you could buy those. When client interviewed Gonzalez, she allegedly repeated the story that she worked for the FBI. So now there's one thing. It's one thing to go into a Waffle House. And try to convince people working in the Waffle House that you're in the FBI. Yeah. It's another thing when you try to convince a police officer. Uh, Gonzalez was arrested and booked into the Maroon County Jail. Bail said $1,000. <sighs> yeah, the minute you start talking to a cop, that, that you are bang. That's impersonation of an officer. They... They get cranky. Unrelated. About that. Someone in the chat is saying that not only will Waffle House be open during the apocalypse, but that it might be the safest place to be during a battle between heaven or hell. <laughs> and I invite you to watch the movie Legion. Yeah, yeah. It's not a Waffle House, yeah. but it kind of tells you how that would go down. I, I just, what the fuck are you trying to accomplish here? Why would you not just report this to the actual cops? I, I think she's trying to shake the Waffle House down somehow. And not to be like, you know, not to be like ageist here, but you're 60 years old. Trying to bluff the Waffle House that you're in the FBI. Yeah. It can be done, but you might need to have some sort of identification that doesn't look like you bought it from a Tennessee uh, gift, sh gift shop from a restaurant. Do you remember station. when Betty White was on SNL? Well, you don't watch SNL. I do not. But they did a whole skit. They did, what was it? CSI Sarasota. <laughs> and they put like a Dana Scully wig on her and they were like investigating crimes at the nursing homes. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there are 60-year-old FBI agents. There, yeah, there are, but they don't normally... They're not assigned to the fucking Waffle House beat. Nobody is assigned yeah. to the Waffle House beat. <laughs> it is... Like, you could have just said... Because as everybody knows, the Waffle House is just a giant NSA PSYOP. If she had Waffle just... Waffle Houses aren't even real. If she, Everyone in there is an agent. If she had just come in and said, I'm from corporate, she probably would have gotten away with it and she wouldn't have broken the law by impersonating officer. Like way lower down on the criminal, to, you know, totem pole there. Just say, I'm from corporate. And the people in the Waffle House said, okay, do whatever the fuck you want. You're corporate. We don't give a shit. Have fun. Yeah. Not my problem. Oh, okay. Yep. Because you're working in the Waffle House again. The stakes are not really up there. You're not protecting the nuclear yeah. goddamn codes. <laughs> no. You're <sighs> just making hash browns and smothering them in something. We have another 60-year-old this week. I, I, I am so disappointed in my elders. Now listen. I mean, in general. In general, yeah. Now listen. There is nothing wrong. I, I just by, by trying to explain this, you're, I'm already making you afraid and you should be. There is nothing wrong with getting it later in life and still expressing your sexuality and being a sexual being. You are allowed to do that. That is, that is fine. No, if anyone has a problem with it, fuck them. Not like that, but you know, <laughs> screw them. Uh, not like that. However, 
there is embracing your sexuality and then there is inflicting your sexuality. There is a considerable difference between the two, yet this gentleman in Florida helps us make the distinction. Naked man, 60, arrested for indecent scenario on Florida Beach. Why is scenario in quotes? Uh, Was he like dancing naked to the Onyx song? No. Because that would be awful, but funny. Meet Leighton. Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. <laughs> meet, meet Leighton Paul Nauman. 60-year-old sound engineer went to the beach Saturday afternoon and hoped afternoon hoping to arrange a sexual encounter or quote maybe just go home with someone's phone number while such goals may be commonplace nauman's interesting tactics resulted in his arrest at blind creek beach a clothing optional spot in jensen beach florida in response to prior complaints about lewd behavior occurring on beach pathways sheriff's deputy was on foot patrol when he came across upon a naked nauman seated in a recliner chair with a hat over his face an arrest report offers an explicit account of the, quote, genital presentation observed by the cop. Um, the document describes multiple rings, a metal chain, and a note advising passerbys to, quote, feel free, please feel free to investigate gently. Like, uh, on him? And in him, apparently. Not just like laid out next to him. He had made like he had, he had like kind of like this, this jewelry thing going on there. Like I love, and this is for the Star Trek fans out there. I love that this guy effectively turned his dick into a horda. It's beautiful. I was thinking Cenobite. And yeah, it's a bit like that too. Yes. Just, they always seemed especially S and M E to me. I just I loved and and the fact that the trust he instilled in his fellow Floridians to pull to please investigate gently. He is lucky as fuck. Some kid on a skateboard didn't go by and just grab a chain and pull as he went up went along. Yeah, because you're for literally fun. laying there with your face covered with your tackle out with stuff on it. Yep. Yeah. That, that that's way too much trust to put in the to get world. A, you were hoping to get a phone number that way. I yeah. I mean, I have heard some ways of of that. That just that's not going to work. I don't. That's that's not like it. I mean, I'm sure Florida has specific clubs for that. Not just going Although, out. Although honestly, from. From what I've heard, those clubs and parties don't tend to admit single men. Mm. Probably for reasons like this. The the other problem was this beach is actually visible from t visible to uh, parents with children as well as other beachgoers, which is weird as hell to me that she'd have a nude beach in view of kids because that's just asking for freaking trouble like or like this i mean unfortunately yeah because people on the like yeah. in an ideal world in an ideal world fuck it. but it is kids love to be naked anyway kids should get to know what humans look like but then people then people happen yeah just yeah you know, it's in theory if you could trust people even that much if we fine, could just behave can't. like evolved beings but that's yeah. not how we work so we're going to hand a hang out on a recliner chair with a hat over our face and just, you know, a metal and detector's Dick worth James. of nonsense. Yeah. Please investigate. Please feel free to investigate. No. No. No, thank you. No, I, I, I don't I don't quite feel like playing Agatha Christie with your dick chains, okay? I really feel like he missed an opportunity just turning it into a big old sundial. <laughs> Uh, like when the, it's the sun is too strong put on your sunblock it's been 20 minutes how do i know <laughs> moving along to fulton county georgia for this one and 
just because when you get on the stand, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. There are sometimes maybe you just want to pull it back a little. Um, Witness for the prosecution says he might fall asleep due to drug use in Young Thug Rico case. Quote, I'm so high right now. Witness, for, witness for the prosecution in the Young Slime Life racketeering trial told the judge he was so high he might just fall asleep while testifying in Fulton County Criminal Court. Adrian Bean is one of the people the state have sought to use to establish the hip hop, yeah, the hip hop recording artist Jeffrey Williams, better known by his stage name Young Thug, Thug, was at the scene of a drive-by shooting. Uh, Bean, however, has not offered particularly illuminating testimony in the case so far. Man, um, Bean said on Tuesday, slowly leaning forward in the witness chain chair, "Can I get some water or something? I'm so high right now, y'all." I'm about to go to sleep on y'all now. I am. I'm going to be real with you. I am so fucking high. Yeah, maybe not like the whole truth. <laughs> maybe you, like 90% of the truth would have been sufficient. You got to respect the ethics of the man, Tara. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, sitting through court <laughs> is boring enough. Why would you do downers? <laughs> how do you? How do you? Also, fuck? Like you're you're testifying in a trial involving someone fucking dying. Yeah. Just do us all a solid and take that a little more serious, please. Because so <laughs> objection. My client is fucked up, sustained. Oh. Did you bring enough for the whole courtroom? <laughs> I mean, I can't. If fault, not, that's just rude. I can't fault him for being like, yo, I, I'll be honest. I am so fucking high. <laughs> of course, that is a problem. I mean, maybe he was nervous. There is a certain. I can see being nervous and trying to mellow out a little bit. There is a certain type of person. You get them high, they get entirely too honest. They can't help themselves. Mm. It's like a truth serum, except not really. It's just they're, they're just so chill. They're just like, I am so fucking on drugs, Your Honor. Because they're just yeah. like, yeah. There is no inside voice anymore. Nope. Nope. It's just, it's it's all, yeah, let's just roll with it. What what could go wrong? Some people are like that without drugs. Some people are, yeah. That's kind of the central point. Uh, um, let's see. Oh, for fuck's sake. Just, my God. All right. Moving right along. This is, uh, I believe, Fort, yeah, Fort Myers, Florida. We're back to Florida again. We have had so many people go into a, an airport and say the word bomb. Uh, they, they, just, they apparently never get tired of it. This is the first time I've ever seen it for uh, an airport like this. Um, man arrested for making bomb threat at Pagefield Airport. A uh, man was arrested and accused of, be, of making a bomb threat at the Pagefield Airport in South Fort Myers. According to a police report, the suspect, while driving a white Dodge pickup truck, came into base operations around 7 p.m. and made a verbal bomb threat before leaving the scene. Greg Poole, 64, allegedly went up to the clerks and said he wanted to make a noise complaint about an aircraft flying over his home and spraying chemicals. He said it knew it was coming from the airport because he tr was tracking the plane. The Port State's Poole asked the clerks if they knew about the FBI building that had blown up. According to both clerks, Poole then said, if that plane does not stop flying over my house, you will be next before getting in his truck and driving away. Law enforcement found an arrested pool uh, at House of Trikes and Bikes on Fowler Avenue. <laughs> Faces charges making false reports concerning planting a bomb. 
a shotgun, rifle, and gun were found in the truck with ammunition. Well, of course it was. It was Fort Myers, Florida. What a weird sentence. First of all, yeah, no Oxford comma. Right. But a shotgun, rifle, and gun. Yeah. This feels like one of those logic problems they used to give you in elementary <laughs> school because a shotgun and a rifle are also both guns. Yes. That sentence is just a mess and it makes me upset. <laughs> I don't like it. I, what the, like, if a house, a plane, but also, with... like, he wanted to make a noise complaint or a complaint about chemicals. I don't know, but his complaint am amounted to, I'm going to blow up the building, which, as yeah. we all know, works very well when it comes to aviation. Especially at airports. They love that shit. It's, yeah. it's, it's the fastest way to get some assistance at the airport is to throw, just invoke the time that other federal buildings have exploded. That makes them yeah. really enjoy Yeah, because, like, did you just low-key admit to another act of terrorism? Because... They're going to look into that. I promise you. You're I, now a suspect. We live close to a commercial airport. We actually not just we live close to uh, uh, like it's the the local area airport, Charleston airport. We live close by and it can be noisy sometimes. I, I really hate it when when they're, it's also an Air Force location, which they aren't very considerate of civilians, I have to say. Um, and it's irritating, but I've never thought to myself why the solution to this is to invoke terrorism that yeah. will make things quieter and everyone will be happy. I live about an hour North of a lot of air force people and NORAD. Yeah. And occasionally there's just very loud choppers that fly all over Colorado. And sometimes it's for a reason and sometimes it's practice, I guess. I don't know. But like you'd think an hour away, you wouldn't get it. But every now and then there will just be a fucking giant chopper just circling the neighborhood and everyone's like, what's going on? And they're like, oh, it's just the Air Force practicing. And that's really annoying, especially when they want to practice at like 7 a.m. Mm. But I have not threatened to blow up NORAD and over not, it. Not only that, he got in his truck. He drove down there. So now they yeah. have they got his description. He probably gave them his name. They've got his license plate. All of the and he probably left there like I told them. Now they understand. Oh, now they now now that I've made my point. The matter is settled. Why are there blue lights behind me? I don't understand. Something didn't work you know, here. Do you know what worries me oh, man. about living near NORAD? I mean, not just the fact that I live an hour away from a legitimate target. Mm. But do you know what they built on top of NORAD? I've probably mentioned this before. Giant mountain. A zoo. Oh, the zoo. A fantastic zoo. What is zoo? On top of probably one of the biggest nuclear targets we've got. Well, I mean, it's okay. They can just go through the Stargate. Problem solved. Yeah, I mean, maybe the maybe the giraffes are supposed to be the real nuclear deterrent, because that would stop me. I'd be like, blow up all the people. Wait, there's hippos there? <laughs> okay. Uh, um, this next one, two things about this. Number one, sometimes you were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And the second thing is, uh, their makeup here, their, their lip gloss game is just on point. I gotta say it's re it's impressive. It is impressive. Um, alleged, uh, Luzerne County dealer arrested 2000 doses of fentanyl seized. Okay. I'm just trying to get the picture here just so you can see the lip gloss here. 
that is that is some impressive work with lip gloss. I gotta say, yeah, that that is, you know, the, the, there's also all the drugs. We did but, a little bit with the blush and highlighter, but that's okay. The, the, just that that you know, a little the, there's all the drugs, but we'll get to that in a second. That I'm I'm a little impressed. Okay, so um, wrong place, wrong time. Alleged teenage drug dealer was arrested when police say over two thousand doses of fentanyl were seized. West Hazleton Police Department stated a month-long investigation was conducted into sales of various drugs in the borough. On Friday, March 15th, a Honda Accord was turning onto a street when it nearly struck a marked patrol car. The driver began to flee from officers till he was forced to stop due to the heavy traffic. As a result of the investigation, police say they arrested 19-year-old Daniel L. Garato Jr. Investigators say they seized the following items during El Grotto's address uh, arrest: twenty two hundred individual doses of fentanyl, two hundred forty nine grams of methamphetamine, unlawfully possessed steroids, cash used in the furtherance of drug trafficking, a large amount of materials used for process packaged drugs, and a partridge in a pear tree. El Grotto has been charged with two counts of possession of controlled substance with intent to deliver. So. Unfortunately, the partridge is too high to testify. He's driving along with a fucking pharmacy in the trunk, nearly hits a visible cop car. Now, at this point, you could maybe stop and bluff your way out of it. You could be like, oh, my God, officer, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. I'm, I'm super sorry. I, I guess I'll get a ticket. Uh, you write me up. Here's here's my license, registration, all that. If you, if the shit is drugs in the car, if it's not visible, if it's not visible, you could have been yeah. fine. But no, no, you decided to be like, I am going to flee, and this will work. It never works. It it's never. Never fuck. Yeah, but people with Chandler are, are quoting Hunter S. Thompson. They're not wrong. Is shit never what fucking What freaks works. me out is like the 2,200 doses of fentanyl, as mm -hmm. I understand it, that could be like a bottle this big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's like a grain of rice yeah, you, on fentanyl. Yeah. Could kill you. You just, you, you just. The running. Yeah. Like, if I had that many drugs in the car, well, I wouldn't have that. But if I did, 10 and 2, speed limit observed at all times, drive defensively. I mean, I think it's probably fair to say that some of the drugs in the car <laughs> were inside the driver. <laughs> I mean, you're probably not wrong. Never get high on your own supply. It leads to problems. All right. The last one this week. We normally don't do stories where people get hurt unless they do it to themselves. This was incredibly stupid, incredibly dishonest, and incredibly fucked up. Oof. This, wow. Bra folks, brace yourselves. This is going to be like, th this is, this made me a little uncomfortable. I'm going to be true. I'm going to be honest there. This guy, <sighs> student persuaded by his friend to get his leg amputated for a $1.3 million insurance scam wound up getting only $7,000 that he now has to return. University student in Taiwan, who had his leg amputated in hopes of receiving a $1.3 million insurance payout, been arrested on suspicion of fraud. 23-year-old, identified only by his last name, Zhang, plunged his feet in a bucket of dry ice for more than 10 hours to get them so badly frostbitten, he would need a double amputation. The Bureau said a friend of Zhang's from high school, identified only as Lao, 
persuaded him to carry out the insurance scam. Lau, also 23, suffered losses from trading cryptocurrency. And he tricked Zhang into signing a legal note obligating him to pay about $800,000. Weird how this guy didn't want to freeze his own legs off to deal right? with crypto debt. Right. Just days. But also, the f like, what kind of pain tolerance are we talking about here? I don't even fucking know. Ten hours, like, after two seconds, I'd be like, you know what? I don't need the money that bad. Just days before, Zhang bought several expensive policies for life insurance, travel insurance, and accident insurance. Medical staff said something was amiss while assessing him. His legs bore no shoe or, sho or socks marks, and his injuries appeared symmetrical, which were inconsistent with the naturally occurring frostbite inju injury. Um, the weather on the night of January 26th, oh my God, was also nowhere close to below freezing with its coldest temperature at about 42 degrees Fahrenheit. As Taiwan is a subtropical region, cases of severe frostbite requiring amputation are unheard of due to natural climactic conditions. Why was this the scam? Well, we live in a subtropical climate. You know what we're going to do? We're going to fake frostbite. I, this is, this fucking hell and all i can think is the only way this makes sense is this is someone who is invested in cryptocurrency lots of ridiculous things make sense to them but how did you make it make sense to the friend like i, I don't know if my it's... friend ever was like okay listen i'm in some financial trouble i need your help what i need you to do is plunge your legs into a bucket of dry ice for 10 hours, Damn. and then we're going to make so much money. They would be so blocked. We would not be speaking. Oh, no, my first response, my first response would be, that's, that's hilarious. That's cool. That's funny. I guess that's, right. that's neat. Yeah. Wait, but wait. then when they're like, no, I'm serious. I got the dry house in the car. Get the fuck out of my house. Serious? I mean, I'm an American. We are always on the verge of financial ruin at any given moment. It's just how things roll for us. Just sell pictures of your feet like everybody else. Right? They have OnlyFans in Taiwan, don't they? I love that they jump to, all right, our first, first option is we're going to cut off your legs. Couldn't I just, you know... Spread my butt cheeks in front of a camera. I'm I'm not proud. No, no, we're cutting your like legs if you're off. Gonna, if you're gonna do stuff to your body to make money, there's more fun things you can do. Right? And you keep your legs. Love that. And listen, like the the the, the sad part is, I don't know if sad's the right word, but there are tons of people in this world. Who've had their legs amputated because they actually needed that. Right. Or whose legs just don't work the way all of ours do. And they probably live full, wonderful lives. A lot of them would also probably say, I didn't love the part where my legs got amputated. Right. And this guy, this fucking guy. <sighs> Takes out the insurance policies like the week before, too. That doesn't look shady. The dumbest motherfuckers. Just. It's so. They're so infuriating. Like. There are, I assume, potentially smart ways you could do this. But this is like. This is like. If Angela Lansbury encountered this, this plot, she'd be like, Are you fucking shitting me? You got me out of bed for this? Yeah. Really? <laughs> I'm supposed to be having tea with Tom right. Bosley. Tom fucking Bosley. And what, what, what the fuck? Have you, what is this? What is this shit? 
I'm old. I'm not going to live long. Don't waste my time. Like, like the subtropical climate part. That they picked. What frostbite. was your story? They picked frostbite. Of all the fucking things. I just. Yes, the first thing we learned this week is if you are in dire financial straits, do not leap immediately to removing body parts. And like some of us are in dire financial straits because capitalism. Right. Some of us are in dire financial straits because we're morons. Yeah, that that. Crypto, not even once. Um, we've learned that if you are driving around with so many illegal substances, your car is high. Then <laughs> you better drive like... Maybe it's... that's why he almost hit the cop car. <laughs> it's like Herbie the Love Bug, only the car is fucked up. No, I just you better drive like it's your it, you are going out for your first driving test and you got the motherfucker in the car with you. That's how you drive. Do not be cavalier about that shit. We've learned that airports of all kinds love bomb threats. Go and make as many as you want. It's like it's like a party love for it. them. It's the best time. We've learned that just because you have to be honest under oath. There's a line. Okay. You don't have to volunteer some shit. Like if they'd ask you if you were high, maybe. But don't be just like, I'm going to be honest. If they don't honest. ask. If they don't ask. You don't have to tell them. Just come on. We've learned that decorating your area and leaving it out as a presentation. Um, not, not, not the best way to, to attract potential sexual encounters. I mean, you just got to know your audience. You got to <laughs> read the room because there are places where, yeah, you're going to, you're going to get exactly what you want out of that, but it's not the beach. No, it's not, not in the public. public beach. That's not how that works. And finally, we, if we learned, if you're going to impersonate an officer, a federal officer, make it important. Okay? Like the fucking Winchesters were trying to stop the apocalypse. What are you trying to yeah. stop? Hash browns? 